Hey there! So today we're going to be talking about The Awakening by Kate Chopin, and I'm going to be presenting a framework for understanding Edna's Awakening. Edna's Awakening is about, as the book says, coming to the realization of the human experience, in reclaiming her bodily autonomy, in carving out space for herself, and in expressing her feelings of passion and desire, Edna realizes that her internal experience will never match her external experience. The gap between her vision of existence and her actual lived experience is what drives her towards the sea. This presentation will assert that Edna's first awakening is towards Adèle Ratignon and that her nature as an artist establishes early in the novel the disconnect from the life created and the life desired. So you're going to hear vocabulary from deconstruction, from psychoanalysis, and from queer theory throughout this presentation. And again, once more, it's just my thesis statement that we're going to be looking at both the character Adele Ratignol as Edna's first, you know, drive towards self-determination and self-expression, and then also how her role as an artist helps us understand the gap that Edna exists within. So looking at the critics, which are all pulled from the Norton Critical Edition you see here in the center, First, Percival Pollard in 1909 wrote an essay called The Unlikely Awakening of a Married Woman, in which he says, of course she went and drowned herself. She realized that you can only put out fire with water. Uh, his assertion remains that once her desire is awakened, this sexual desire, she realizes that no man will ever be enough to quench it. He argues that whether it's Arabon or Robert or her husband, they're all interchangeable to Edna. The danger of a woman awakening to her sexuality is that she will become so engulfed in her desire that the only way to put out that fire is by death, which we are really going to argue against. Louis Leary in 1971 wrote an essay called Kate Chopin and Walt Whitman, where he, he argues or explores Chopin's inspiration by Whitman and how you know, we can make connections between their writing. This quote here, though, it was foundational in how I began to view the novel. So the awakening is not a problem novel. If it seems inevitably to invite questions, these are subsidiary to its purpose, which is to describe what might really happen to a person like Edna Pontellier being what she was living when she did and where. And I agree. Using Leary's argument, we can read Edna as a woman out of time, surrounded by those who are content to have things remain as they are instead of pushing towards the horizon of possibility. Finally, Anne Heilman in 2008 wrote an essay called The Awakening in New Woman Fiction. And I like Heilman's focus on Edna's self-determination. I'm going to also pick up on that. Heilman also claims that neither Mademoiselle Rise nor Madame Rottignol's version of being a woman, quote, offer Edna an adequate model for an alternative existence. And I do agree in some ways. So I do think that Edna is not so much an artist that she feels compelled to give over everything to her craft. And she certainly isn't interested in being the model mother wife like Madame Ragnol is. However, I would disagree that Madame Ragnol doesn't offer her an alternative script or form. I think she does, but I will get into that a little bit later. So First, we're going to focus on Madame Ratignol, and again, I think that she is Edna's first object of desire. So my critical turn here, um, Jules Chemetsky states that the question in this novel is how to be free in oneself and for oneself, but still meaningfully connected to others. And I think this last part, this meaningful connection to others, is what Edna comes to realize she's never going to be able to do. Um, and so then Leary also pinpoints the novel's focus on self-determination, you know, arguing that Edna is awakened to the possibilities for self-expression, but because of, you know, she is what she is, circumstances are what they are, society is what it is. The, this self-expression cannot be realized, which I think connects back to the previous quote about not being able to meaningfully connect with others. So obviously sexual and physical awakening are central to her character and to the novel in general, but another reading would broaden that scope to allow for a reading that doesn't affirm the antiquated notion that a woman's sexual awakening leads to her death. I do think the suicide can be read not as a decision of hopelessness, but rather as a commentary on the space available to women who fully know themselves within the patriarchy. That particularly in this time period, to know yourself was to be made fully aware of just how limited you are by the world. The novel is filled with moments where the image or the idea of something that is desired is unfulfilled by the reality. 
The thing that we construct in our minds cannot ever be fully and truly brought to life. As Derrida puts it, the written signifier is always technical and representative. The notion of the sign always implies within itself the distinction between signifier and signified. And it is that gap that Edna comes to exist in. So um, I'm first going to again talk about Edna, how Edna exerts her gaze over Madame Rottignol. And the novel states that once Edna's eyes were locked on some object, it was as if she were, quote, lost in some inward maze of contemplation or thought. Edna gazes at Madame Rottignol, quote, as she might look upon a faultless Madonna. Edna's idealized woman, the woman who holds her gaze, even with Robert and company, is the perfect picture of the ideal woman that many critics argue Edna tries to break from. Adele is the, quote, embodiment of every womanly grace and charm, a picture of the, quote, bygone heroine of romance and the fair lady of our dreams. Pregnant with her fourth child and in the seventh year of her own marriage, she is the maternal foil to Edna. She is sociable and loved by those around her. And it is this woman, the picture of feminine virtue, that Edna holds in her gaze. The women differ on their ideas of motherhood, so I wouldn't argue that Edna wants to be like Adele in that regard. However, I do think the initial stages of Edna's awakening are directed towards Adele. Even though the reader has been alerted to conversations Edna has with Robert, Edna's first true divulgence of self is with Adele. I believe Adele's sense of self draws Edna's desire and attention. Edna desires to know herself, to be more aware of her lived experience. And the proof for that comes actually in the scene just before this. So in the scene before, Edna steals away to her balcony after a disruptive night with her husband. The text states, quote, she could not have told why she was crying. Such experiences as the foregoing were not uncommon in her married life. This moment of her crying isn't proof that she is suddenly unhappy in her marriage and is just now realizing it because of Robert. The text states she often finds herself like this, but doesn't know why. The not knowing is significant, and I argue is the thing that begins to change at Grand Isle. Quote, an indescribable oppression, which seemed to generate in some unfamiliar part of her consciousness, filled her whole being with a vague anguish. She was just having a good cry all to herself. Her husband here is, is not abusive. He pouts when he doesn't get his way. And, you know, he does obviously uphold the societal expectations of marriage and motherhood. But time and again, the reader is reminded of how devoted he is to her. And she also recognizes his devotion and care of her. The oppression is the lack of understanding herself, of not knowing why she needs to cry, not understanding why she can't feel at home in the life she created. And the text does go out of its way to note that she chooses her husband, despite her family's objections. At Grand Isle, she is surrounded by Creole people, including Madame Rottignol, whose, quote, freedom of expression was at first incomprehensible to her. And I think it is that freedom of self-expression that ignites Edna's awakening. Madame Rottignol captures Edna's attention and affection. In this quote right here, it's talking about what is drawing the two together. And so it says the excessive physical charm of the Creole had first attracted Edna. Then the candor of Madame Rottignol's whole existence, which everyone might read, and which formed so striking a contrast to her own habitual reserve, this might have furnished a link. Who can tell what metals the gods use in forging the subtle bond which we call sympathy, which we might as well call love? Madame Rottignol's way of existing, precisely as she wants to and as she is meant to, draws Edna to her. Edna doesn't want to be her in the way society would have her be, but rather senses Madame Rottignol's command of self and is drawn to that. The text goes so far as to use the word love, speaks of these two women as being drawn together by the gods fused metals in a link. In exploring gender as social performance, Judith Butler discusses how we cannot perform a script we haven't seen before. I think Edna sees Madame Rottignol's script as a woman in command of herself, which then allows her to see the possibility of being that woman. She can repeat Madame Rottignol's performance now that she has seen a woman fully be herself, except that Edna is going to add to that script. Edna wants to be fully herself, but outside of the boundaries of society. She doesn't want it to have to include motherhood or being a wife. She just wants to fully exist as a human. 
Edna's first divulgence of self, her first step towards that command of expression is towards Madame Rotignol. After naming her thoughts and sharing the memory of walking through the Kentucky grass and even how she feels about that memory, the text states, quote, she was flushed and felt intoxicated with the sound of her own voice and the unaccustomed taste of candor. It muddled her like wine or like a first breath of freedom. The exposing of her true feelings and self to her female friend emboldens her and makes her drunk with self-power. Then combined with this move towards self-expression, we have to look at how she expresses herself as an artist. Edna's artistic nature also helps the reader understand the gap between the world inside herself and the world outside of herself. We are told that even as a child, she had lived her own small life all within herself, the dual life, that outward existence which conforms, the inward life which questions. Edna brings those inward questions out into her life, but is met with the limitations of her time. So as her artistic skill you know, takes on a greater no role in the novel, you know, she does provide her some financial independence. It provides her excuse for space and time to herself. You know, Edna is described as having a, quote, natural aptitude for painting and, quote, sensuous susceptibility to beauty. While Madame Rotignol, Edna, and Robert are sitting together and talking, Edna draws Adele as a, quote, sensuous Madonna. But, quote, the picture completed bore no resemblance to Madame Rotignol. So Edna destroys it. She had had a vision in her mind and she had the means to communicate that vision. However, when completed, it does not meet the expectation. That gap between what is in her mind and what is in reality will continually frustrate her. While it could be read as her being overly critical of her own work, it is also an example of how the signifiers are always at a distance from the signified. Even the ice cream at a dinner party later on is treated in a similar way. Dinner guests conclude that the ice cream was, quote, a great success, but would be better if it had, quote, had only contained a little less vanilla or a little more sugar, if it had been frozen a degree harder, and if the salt might have been kept out of portions of it. At a table of highborn society members, it's easy to read this scene as a critique of those who are never satisfied with what they have, and that's true. But it can also be read as the things we desire and esteem, you know, dessert is often looked forward to and even anticipated. Those things are never quite actually what we want them to be. Edna is surrounded by those who have accepted this gap and are content to live in that reality, to live in the picture of a thing rather than the thing itself. But once Edna is awakened to her senses, once she connects her emotions, mind and body, she cannot go back to living in the muted version of her life. So ultimately, again, I'm focusing really just on the beginning of the novel because I think if we can then establish this new framework for reading the novel as we carry that forward as it progresses we can start to see things in a broader scope that it's not just about sexual desire and physical intimacy it is about a woman who is trying to connect her inner world to her outer world and is continually met with the gap that exists between those two so it's just a new way of looking at the novel it's just one perspective um, and hope you guys enjoyed it.